Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. You know what do you uh, what do you rejoice? What do you, what what brings you joy and gladness uh, about worship? I I uh, you're you're here like clockwork, and uh, so I know it's very meaningful to you. Um, one of the things that that bring me joy and gladness is just hearing everybody visiting, everybody talking. You have joy in each other's company. I think that's so special. And Stephanie, I love the pre-service music. Thank you. A couple of announcements for the well-being of the order. The first is, it's being September 3rd, our first Sunday. Uh, we have the food bank. And also, uh, for uh, you... you uh, Catechism, folks, we're going to have orientation this Wednesday at 4.30, okay? Yeah! <laughs> and I'll have everything, I'll, I'll have books for everybody, and, and we'll have our handouts and, and everything. So, and then I have um, a schedule, I don't know when confirmation will be, I won't be here because I'll be retired, well, I will be here for the confirmation, I think, at least I'm planning on it right now unless I hear otherwise. Um, so anyway, um, I don't know if we're having catechism. It's always been in April. I just don't know if it's going to be the fourth, the, the fourth week or, or what. So we'll have to decide that. And then adult choir also starts practice September 6th, this Wednesday at 7.15 or 7.15? Really? Okay. Um, As soon as we're done at church, because sometimes we don't get done at church till 7.15. But usually we're, you know, 7 o'clock. Um, it all depends on how long-winded the pastor gets. And then rally day will be next Sunday. Sunday school starts. Bible class starts. We're going to look at, in Bible class, we're going to look at the Lord's Supper for a couple weeks, and we're going to look at... Um, uh, long gospel for a couple weeks for, for a month or so and then we're going to spend a couple weeks on, on television as a formation of faith I know television isn't as big here as it is elsewhere but, but still you should be aware of it and then kids club in the church office will be closed tomorrow morning and afternoon because it's Labor Day so that's me that's it for me on announcements unless you have anything Okay, we continue with the ringing of the bells and the lighting of the candles. The Caroline, I'm sorry, the Caroline. Him 688.
Our order of worship is page 203 in front of the hymnal. Page 203. Is Abel, please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, Call upon him in prayer and praise and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We know we don't deserve this grace he pours forth upon us, this forgiveness that is ours. And because we don't deserve it, we have a peace that passes all understanding and that we desire to share. We continue the Kyrie on page 204.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son willingly endured the agony and shame of the cross for our redemption. Grant us courage to take up our cross daily and follow him wherever he leads. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament lesson for the 14th Sunday after Pentecost is recorded in the 15th chapter of Jeremiah. O Lord, you know, remember me and visit me, and take vengeance for me on my persecutors. In your forbearance, take me not away. Know that for your sake I bear reproach. Your words were found, and I ate them. And your words became to me a joy and a delight of my heart, for I am called by your name, O Lord of hosts, and did not sit in the company of revelers, nor did I rejoice. I sat alone, because your hand was upon me, for you had me filled with indignation. Why is my pain and ceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? Will you be to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail? Therefore, thus says the Lord, if you return, I will restore you, and you will stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall be as my mouth. They shall turn to you, but you shall not turn to them. And I will make you to, to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you. For I am with you to save you and deliver you, declares the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second scripture reading, the epistle lesson from the, uh, whoops, whoops, excuse me, from the 12th chapter of Romans. Let love be genuine, abhor what is evil, hold fast to what is good, love one another with brotherly affection, outdo one another in showing honor, do not be slothful in zeal, be fervent in spirit, serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by doing so, you will heap burning coals on his head. 
Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the Alleluia verse. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 16th chapter. You know, there's a different, uh, different views are taught at seminary concerning whether the reader of the gospel lesson should, or, or any of the scripture lessons should give any description of of them before reading them, trusting the, the reason for silence is the dignity of the service and trusting God and, and you to make the connections. But in, in the first three verses of this chapter, of, of what we're going to read, um, 21 through 23, uh, Jesus explains what it means to be the Christ, the Son of the living God. Notice how Peter responds. Uh, do not be critical of Peter. Use his response to ask yourself how you respond. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance to me. For you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. Then Jesus told his disciples, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself, take up his own cross and follow me. For whoever will save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what shall a man give in return for his soul? For the Son of Man is going to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay each person according to what he has done. Truly I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the glory of the Lord. This is the gospel of the Lord, I'm sorry. Praise to you, O Christ. And we, having heard God's word, we make confession of our faith that his word creates in us using the words of the Nicene Creed. And you can find that creed either in the liturgy or in the back of the hymnal. Together, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit to of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven, 
and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together with his worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in the Holy Christian and Apostolic Church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated for our sermon hymn. I'm sure you've heard this from me before, uh, but I think it bears repeating. I mean, we repeat gospel lessons and we repeat Old Testament epistle lessons. Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God, has suffered for you to earn for you eternal life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the announcements over the past couple of Sundays, I've encouraged you to 
read an article written by the Reverend Dr. Matthew Harrison, our synodical president, entitled, What is a Lutheran? This article is found in The Reporter and also in uh, the Fort Wayne Lutheran. It was recopied in the Fort Wayne Lutheran. Uh, today, um, let's see if we can learn a little bit, okay? Today, you have a, a, a little bit more, or, or we have an opportunity to learn more about what it means for Jesus to be the Christ, the Son of the living God. Now, titles and, and, and knowledge can be, you know, they puff us up. Uh, but what do they mean? If we can't explain them, we don't know what we're talking about. I don't know what I'm talking about. And I won't do that. I won't put myself in that spot. So I study hard. So I know what I'm talking about. What does Jesus, wh what is meant by Jesus of Nazareth being the Christ, the Son of the living God? What is meant by that? The Apostle Peter, who had just confessed Jesus is the Christ, and we can learn something I mean, we shouldn't assume, we shouldn't take for granted, oh, everybody knows. I mean, I'm speaking to myself as much as I'm speaking to you there, because I do make that assumption. Um, but Peter confessed that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, but he didn't know what it meant. That is so startling to me. It might be startling to you too. Until... You come to terms with, what do you? I mean, how quick are you to express yourself Christologically? You're afraid of being wrong? Why? You don't know what you're talking about? Well, maybe you should. The Apostle Peter just confessed that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. But he rejected the meaning of these words as, as given to him by Jesus. He found the confession of Jesus so offensive, he, and I quote, took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall not happen to you. Unquote. It is obvious, isn't it? It should be obvious to you. It is obvious that Peter did not agree with Jesus. Do you agree with Jesus? Do I? If Peter uh, could understand some truth about Jesus, but not the meaning of the truth, it is possible for you and for me to understand some truth without understanding the meaning of the truth about Jesus. It seems to me one area that we might not understand the truth about the meaning of our understanding is in response to the word Lutheran. What is a Lutheran? In his article on this subject, the Reverend Dr. Matthew Harrison wrote, this, the doctrine of justification, is what the church is what is, on which the church stands or falls, is what it means to be Lutheran. Unquote. Justification is the doctrine, the teaching that comes from Jesus Himself that he is the Christ, the Son of the living God, who gave his life on the cross for us and rose from the dead three days later. I am not saying that every Lutheran, or that you have to be a Lutheran to be a Christian, but I am saying that um, Lutheran properly understood, is Christian. So regardless of how we understand Lutheran, Luther for himself, at least I've heard this, I do, I've not read it, I don't have a primary source to back me up on it. <clears throat> I'm just going off of memory and, and what I've heard is that Luther never wanted 
those who, of us who believe in his doctrine to, to take the name Lutheran. Well, that's fitting any servant of Jesus. We just don't want people to follow us. We want people to follow Jesus. It would be nice to be recognized as a servant of Jesus, but only as a servant of his. So, um, regardless of our, of our view of the word Lutheran, uh, Lutheran, properly understood, is Christian, but this does not mean you have to be Lutheran to be Christian. It means that every believer in Christ, every Christian believes that they are justified by God because Jesus suffered and died and rose from the dead for us. Peter did not know the meaning of his own confession. And the same, I fear, is true for many, many Christians and Lutherans. He learned from his own weaknesses, though, I think. I mean, when he denied Jesus, he went away and wept bitterly. I mean, that sounds like he knew what he did was wrong. He learned from his own weaknesses to trust the word of Jesus. So, um, Jesus speaks the truth. Pilate once said, what is truth? Or asked, what is truth? I think the guy was being a bit of a jerk. But truth are verbal words that correspond to reality or sign language that corresponds to reality. Truth corresponds to reality. If we say this is reality, then the reality better support what we say. Well, when you get into anything to do with God's word, you get into a whole host of the words of man compared to the words of God. And who, who makes you right and who, you know, you get into all this nonsense. But what does Jesus say? Let's take him at his word. Let's take his actions as meaningful. He is our God. He is our Savior. And we, like Peter, learn about our own weaknesses, don't we? And we learn from our own weaknesses. What do we learn? Well, from my perspective at least, we learn about our need for Jesus. We really need him. And he really comes through for us, doesn't he? Jesus speaks the truth. Even when he is not believed, he speaks the truth. Unbelief cannot and does not receive the benefits of Jesus person, word, and work. So we must, those of us who believe, we must for our own faith and for the faith of other people hold fast the doctrine of justification as true and central. It is what it means to be a Christian and therefore a Lutheran. Justification. I was reading in a catechism a long, long time ago, just as if I never sinned. Let me ask you another question, though, before going on into justification a bit more. If we may understand some truths about God without understanding what these truths mean, might we unintentionally, putting the best construction on everything, Reject other truths of God that we need to accept and to teach. Did you get that question? Talk to me, Larry. Did you get that question? Okay. If we understand some truths of God without understanding what the truths mean... Is it possible for us, unintentionally, I, I would assume, 
to reject other truths of God that we need to accept and teach. Did I ask that question so it made sense, Mike? Talk to me, brother. Should I ask it again? Mike, you're not answering me. Okay. Now, let me give you an example of how this mistake can, can play out. We all believe God loves human uh, sinners, right? God loves sinners. Well, some people mistakenly conclude that since God loves sinners, they use the truth, they don't understand what it means. They go on to say, the desires of every sinner God also loves. So if you are a hetero- homosexual or a, or a heterosexual or if you are turned on by children, it's all good. That's what they mistakenly, erroneously conclude. I'm practicing what they call, Jeremy, um, indoctrination. I'm trying to indoctrinate you to the error Now, such a misuse of God's love leads us to reject God's law. God's law reveals our sin, convicts us of sin, and the gospel, the free gift of forgiveness in Christ, turns us around to Jesus for our justification before God. Uh, this fall, I indicated in the announcements that this fall I plan to teach, well, I, I didn't get this specific, but I plan to teach at least the ninth thesis of Walther's Long Gospel. It's almost one-fourth of the book, and I'm trying not to go beyond no, uh, October on this. So um, our synodical president also addresses our acceptance of God's law. He says, and I quote, If a church body, and this is in the article, if a church body rejects God's law, it cannot call sinners to repentance. It loses the fullness of justification and ceases to be truly Lutheran, unquote. Now, President Harrison is just a man, and you may disagree with him, but understand why you disagree with him, if you do, and what is the evidence justifying your disagreement. And if you don't have evidence, then keep your mouth quiet in front of me. I don't want to hear it. If you do have scriptural evidence, I want to hear it. See, we, are we speaking for God or just for ourselves? President Harrison goes on to say, if you do, not need, you do not need to be Lutheran to be Christian because we are all saved by God, quote, solely out of his fatherly divine goodness and mercy through simple faith in Jesus as their Savior, unquote. I would just say that, you know, we're all Christians. To be Lutheran is to be a Christian, but you don't need to be a Lutheran to be a Christian. Peter wanted to protect Jesus from harm. He wanted to do the right thing, I think. Now, Peter, he wanted, what did he want to protect Jesus from? Suffering in particular. But his very desire showed his opposition to God. It's human nature to shun the cross. We don't want to suffer. And I say we because I don't either. But sometimes God uses suffering to work incredible blessings, like forgiveness and eternal life through the suffering of his son, Jesus the Christ, for you and me. Opposition, though, it always sounds so religious, you know. He began to rebuke Jesus, saying, "Eh, it's not going to happen to you. 
Hey, you're getting in the way of me helping people receive salvation, Peter. You're doing the will of Satan, Peter. You're serving Satan. I know it's a hard pill to swallow. Sometimes I've had to accept the truth that my service was not what I intended it to be. Maybe you need to accept that too. I think you do. What do you think? No, I'm not putting you down. I'm just, I'm, just, and I'm not putting myself down. I'm just, you know, I've made mistakes. I've, I have failed and, and you have too. Just admit it. See our need for Jesus. Peter's opposition to Jesus was truly satanic. So was mine. And so was yours. But the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin and guilt. Jesus justifies us before God. Even our satanic opposition to Jesus is forgiven. In faith, we cling to Jesus. Don't you just love that statue? I don't think she's here, but after one of our members, her husband died, and for weeks she would just come up and, and cling to the statue. What a Christian, what, a, what faith. I think you guys are beautiful. Even our satanic opposition to Jesus is forgiven. Now in the movie Titanic, you might not have seen it, but I did, a bunch of times. In the movie Titanic shows people who are terrified of the ship sinking in the icy waters, and they grab a hold of something solidly fastened to the ship in the false hope of saving their lives. How much more so we cling to the true hope that truly saves us from eternal death, the suffering, the death, and the resurrection of the Christ the Son of the living God, Jesus of Nazareth. He is our hope. Peace be with you always in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> And we continue with the service uh, with the bringing forward of the offering. As able, please rise for prayer. I, I, we know that it, it is emotionally uncomfortable for us to think of suffering, to think of the cross, and yet that is exactly what you would have us do because you did it, Jesus for our salvation. And so we suffer all, even, even death itself, rather than refuse to quit helping people believe in you. This is what you want. And you are our God. You are our Savior. We claim to serve you Help us know that service means giving you what you want. And you want people redeemed by your sacrifice. You want people in faith because you sacrificed yourself for them. 
So help us in our faith and help us help others in their faith. Gracious Father, we ask your blessing on on all of our government leaders, from our president on down to, well, what we might consider the lowliest position. Regardless of age or sex or gender or wealth or faith, bless our national and state leaders. Bless also our church leaders, President Harrison, President Stuckwish, and their families. Bless all who serve in our military, especially Peyton, Olivia, Timothy, and Faith. Now coming back closer to home, we ask your blessing on all the members of Martini, especially those who are in worship this day. You love them, and they respond to you. They respond to your love by worshiping you. For those of us who are in public positions like the pastor or teacher, we know that there are visible expectations of us to be in church, and sometimes that can render, uh, or that can put us, I, I know I have, I have really, well, am I doing this because you love me or because I need to be here? I, I, and I've gone into all kinds of internal conflict over that. And the truth is you forgive me and you forgive all of us. You are our peace. You are our peace. So we ask your blessing on Jerome and Darlene, on Carol and Doreen, on Ron and Mary. Look tenderly also upon your persecuted people, wherever in the world they may be. Bless also the people of Ukraine and the Ramirez family. Hear us in Jesus' name, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Would the communion assistants please come forward at this time? Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood shed for you for the remission of sins. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
Nook Dimitris, page 211. Please rise as able. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our closing hymn, Christ be my leader. Amen.